I feel like you should do this panel. I should go have a <laughs> Let you take a break. <laughs> well, welcome to Child Free 60 Plus. I'm Cody. I'll be one of the moderators today. And I'm Lenora. I'll be the other moderator for today. Uh, thank you to our presenting sponsor, Child Free Media, our champion level sponsor, Child Free Wealth, and our additional sponsors, Best Child Free Life Possible Facebook Group, 365 Diversity, Buy Child Free, Buy Child Free Shop, Child Free Family, Child Free Journals, StopHavingKids.org, StreamYard, The Age of the Child, a novel by Kristen Tetsy, and Wild Egg, a novel by Jennifer Flint. And we have a little disclaimer, opinions expressed within the uh, content are solely the speakers and do not reflect the opinions and beliefs of the event or its affiliates. So with that being said, let's bring our speakers up. All right. Hi. We got Laurel, we got, yay. We got Laurel, she's here, she's here. All right, yeah. that, <laughs> it's awesome. So let's just start out with the basics. Tell us about yourself, Gretchen, if you wouldn't mind going first. Sure. Um, I'm not sure exactly what is relevant here. I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> Wisdom, <laughs> right? experience. I mean, listen, we could go on. <laughs> <laughs> Let me turn my volume up a notch. Um, yeah, you know, um, how old is a person usually when they start to tease out the gender binary? Aren't you about like maybe three years old? That's fair. Yeah. Mm. When I was three years old, I observed that this was in the 1950, early 1950s, that boys grow up to be men and girls grow up to be women. And that's not something you have a choice about. But there remains the question in my mind, if you've grown up to be a woman, do you have to become a mommy? And that was a, a really uh, pressing question in New Jersey in the 1950s because everyone had children. It was the, the baby boom was being produced. And there was there, there was the, there was one spinster in our town, that's what they were called, and one childless couple. And I was like, how did that happen? And how can I be like them? Because <laughs> I knew I didn't want to have babies. I was just, you know, I didn't like being a child. I The children who were around me were often uh, giving me problems. And I could see that my mother was not happy with a house full of little kids. And I, I just thought if it's possible for me to choose otherwise, then let me choose that. And my mother was wise and she said, no dear, you do not have to be a mommy when you grow up. You don't have to. All right. And I decided then and there, and I really never wavered from that decision. There were, there were times when there was pressure of various forms and I would kind of go, well, do I, you know, shall I bow to this? There's some big considerations here. And I just decided, no, I, I need to remain true to what I know of myself. Yeah. Did that answer the question? It I don't did. know. Okay. I don't remember the question. So if, if you're comfortable giving your age and, and like your, your location, not your exact address, but uh, sure. to the audience. Um, I'll be 73 in a couple months. All right. And and I live in Northern California. Okay. Well, thank you, Gretchen. Yeah. Laurel, how about you? Hi, Kiora from I'm from Rotorua, New Zealand. Calling you. It's the sun is just coming up on Monday, uh, Sunday morning out here. Uh, and I'm I'm 63, so I'm just barely over the line into this group, <laughs> and. But I am old still. Um, and I am involved in helping people who are going through diversities in their lives get their mojo back. That's basically what I do. And I enjoy the living daylights out of it. And I 
live in a tiny house in the tiny country with my two tiny dogs, and I have a huge, wonderful, terrific life. You know, already you two are like the perfect antidote to all the comments we get about being sad and alone and 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 um, just sitting around doing nothing over the age of 50. TikTok has this thing like once you turn 50 and you don't have kids, life is over. So, I mean, you two have just already <laughs> obliterated all all of that just by by sharing your um your stories. So, let's talk about regret, you know, people like to throw that at us. Um how do you respond to people? I don't know if you get that, if people ask you or, or say you're going to regret it now, but, but mm -hmm. in your journey of life, where are you with, with regret? Gretchen, go ahead. You know, um, once I got to be about, I guess, 50, maybe more or less, people stopped pestering me and I kept, I, I stopped getting that kind of question. Um, I, I really have to say, I have no regrets, that's for sure. Getting sterilized was the smartest thing that I've ever done for myself. And, um, you know, people, I, I think that, I think people need to see that there are alternatives, that you do not have to have children, and that you can have a big, fulfilling life. You can go deep into your education, travel the world, start a business. And I've done all of those things and I don't feel unfulfilled or regretful in the least. That's awesome. That's so good to hear. As someone who is 58, <laughs> <laughs> kidding. Um, no, but it's it, seriously though, it's it's great because I, you know, we're going to have the next generation panel coming up after this, but it's hard when someone puts you on the spot, you say you don't want to have kids and then they immediately come back to you with regret or what are you going to do? And, you know, like you just shared about having, seeing al alternatives. We haven't seen a lot from, you know, those further down the line that have made this choice. And it's so nice to have people vocal, like vocalizing at different points of, you know, the child-free journey, because, you know, a lot of times you're looking around going, well, no one else is living this way. So I have no idea what life is going to be like, you know, not that it guarantees anything, but it's just great to hear these stories. Uh, Laurel, go ahead. Yes, I, um, regrets. No, <laughs> I have no regrets. <laughs> um, I've hit it twice now that like two speed bumps in the road first well you're not having children um you're going to regret it and now don't you regret not having grandchildren mm. so it's kind of a, a a later stage of the same same song uh no i have not had any regrets uh i concentrated on my my education and traveling and moving around the world and doing things and it's all a matter of pursuing your best, biggest life and doing the not what's expected of you. And I, I remember when it really, really clicked for me, I was a very young person, uh, maybe all of 19, in a job. And the owner of the company came and sat on my desk one day, sat on my desk, on the edge of my desk, and said, you know, I'm going to tell you something. I have three daughters. I love them to death. But if I had it to do over again, I would not have had them. Wow. And that just, wow. it was one of those revealing moments to me. This guy, we had gotten to be sort of friends, you know, as a multi, multi-millionaire can be to a young starting out person who's answering his telephones. Um, but it stayed with me all these years. And it really played into my decision to not pursue child childbearing and all of the things that go with it. And it's kept me young. <laughs> well, I want to tap into your sage-like wisdom and see uh, how do you enjoy the present without worrying about the future? Gretchen, go ahead. You know, that's a, that's a yoga <laughs> Isn't it? That's a that's a spiritual path. 
not worrying about the future, I'll tell you, you can have a house full of kids and worry even more about the future. Because then you're worrying about not just yourself, but also all of these offspring. That's a great point. Mm -hmm. You know, and and having children is no guarantee that you're going to be taken care of when you're old. You know, yeah. you might, you know, it, that's such a gamble. Like, I'm going to have children so that I'll have a caretaker when I'm old. Mm -hmm. That's a terrible yeah. reason to have children. God, you know, your child mm -hmm. might not be able to take care of you. Um, and, and you're going to have to take care of yourself whether you have children or not. So I always say I'm, I am taking care of an old lady now. And that <laughs> old lady is me. <laughs> I am taking care of an old lady. That's my job. And, you know, having uh, good health and being financially uh, well prepared to take care of yourself, that that's, you're going to have to do that anyway, whether you have kids or not. That's a great point that doesn't get said enough because we we see so much of the, or we, sorry, we hear so much of the opposite where it's like, oh, I'm surrounded by all these kids to take care of me, but to but in all honesty, what those what's the reality of that? I mean, again, we're <laughs> this is again pronatalism from earlier of, of how they don't even teach you how to take care of yourself at a certain point. It's just an automatic mm -hmm. default. Oh, you're good until 50, and then someone else has to take care of you, which clearly yeah. isn't the case. But it's unfortunate that that keeps being perpetuated, that sentiment, right? Um, Laurel, go ahead. It sends you into old age sooner, I think, mm. because you're you're expected to do this made mother crone. And we've hit crone and we're doing okay. And I think it is a matter of preparing and preparing your mind and preparing and giving time for yourself to develop fully as a human being. And that takes a lifetime. It, it, it We only have one. So spend it developing your capabilities and your best self. And I think that's really the secret to it. Good advice. Mm -hmm. All right, that's my cue. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I mean, I'm just enthralled. I'm like, man, this is so great. Uh, <laughs> so how would you encourage the younger generation to respond to the statement, you'll change your mind? And if you, well, and if you don't, you'll regret it. But let's talk about the, let's Let's focus on the changing of the mind part of it because that that's a fear for so many and i mean to be honest like i'm 38 years old no wait i'm 39 i'll be 40 this year okay <laughs> i don't even know what year it is anymore <laughs> i am 39 <laughs> i don't know why i said 38 um wishful thinking uh and and i haven't worried so much it's not been a pressing thought that i might change my mind but for so many people you know who are younger it is so what do you say to that in, in your experience? Gretchen, go ahead. Oh, well, you know, um, I think that it's really, <clears throat> excuse me, a good idea to surround yourself with people who respect you. And when you make a statement about yourself and the person that you're talking to flat out decides that they don't believe you, there, you know, what is that? You know, is that respectful? Yeah. I, I just, I think it's just um, the other person is pressuring you to mirror them and to think and feel and want the same things that they want. And uh, it, it's a good idea to find a way to declare that you that you can want and think and feel different things and that you still like the person and you still are interested in the person that you're speaking to and just say, um, you know, um, we don't have to be the same mm. and we're not the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Laura? My turn. Oh, yeah. yes. <laughs> Uh, I find that I have so many opportunities 
to participate in the lives of young people that is starting as, as a university instructor and ending up now working with all, people of all different age ranges. You can be enriched by other people's children and you can enrich their lives. I, I've never had any feelings that, gee, I wish I had that. And when somebody says to me, oh, you're going to regret it or you'll, you'll have these terrible regrets. Well, that so ship has kind of sailed. You know what I mean? It's, um, I would have already had that by now. But over the years, as people would say, oh, you're being selfish. That's the one I got the most. You're being selfish. Well, it goes back to what we were saying before about how selfish is it to have children to take care of you? Mm -hmm. It's kind of a, a short-sighted yeah. selfishness. So I, I yeah. think, yeah. And with and then, that, how, how have you planned for your long-term care? And I'll let you just continue, Laurel, and then we'll go to Gretchen. Okay. Uh, number one, save money. Um, <laughs> <That's good advice. laughs> yes, save money. And invest in in whatever you can that is, you know, going to produce money. Um, I think that it gives us a little more leverage and a little more leeway also to invest in things and maybe fail on a few things, but to take chances when it's strategic to do so. And it's hard to know when that is, and especially in today's world. But we have the time, and it's the gift of time to figure these things out more in depth than if you're trying to make decisions left and right because you've got mouths to feed and all of the stress of, of caring for others. Um, and I think that preparing home having a place. I own my tiny home. I can move it at will if I want to. Um, and that may, was a large part of my decision to stay in New Zealand. As you could tell, I'm not a New Zealander by, by trade. Um, was economics. It's economically more uh, in, intelligent for me to stay where I am and where I have what they call here Fano, which is my family, my friends. I have no more real family in the States. So it's my friends and the people that I've collected along the way that are part of my life and part of my retirement and my going into my, my dotage, which is happening any moment now, as I've been told. Um, but that's, that's, I hope that answered the question. Oh yeah, <laughs> it, it does. does. Yeah, so great to have you. <laughs> Well, uh, you know, I just really have to totally agree with Laurel that um, providing for yourself financially is very important. Um, you know, I worked, I saved, I invested. Um, and yeah, having a nest egg and taking care of your health, you know, keeping... Uh, keeping up with that exercise program and all that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a form of self-care, taking care of your money. Yeah. And yeah. So yeah. What, what is that? Uh, what you said. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, go Stop ahead. You there. No, go ahead. I was going to say to Gretchen, what you said about maintaining your health is really important. And being able to focus on yourself to do that is is wonderful because I have a, a number of health problems and just the ability to be able to take the time to deal with it and to live with it and to move on uh -huh. and to keep yeah. working and doing and being a part of things it takes a lot of effort and it's, yeah. a, it's effort that I can spend on myself extravagantly. <laughs> Do you well, think that has helped you, you know, as, as you've gone through health challenges, knowing that you have that time, that space to, to take care of yourself? Yes, absolutely. When I need to shut down for a while, I shut down for a while and nobody's banging on my door or, you know, yelling mommy at me or grandma at me or anything like that. Um, I'm auntie to quite a few kids, but that's, a whole different thing. I can walk into my tiny house and close my tiny door and be left alone. And uh, that's great for me. 
And so what what does your community look like? Uh, Laurel, you, you touched on this a little bit, if you could, um, we're, we're getting close to the end, but what does your community immediately around you look like? And the same question for Gretchen. Well, Gretchen, oh, I'll, me first. Okay. Yes, please. Um, like I say, I have my tiny house. I live basically within a, a compound of sorts with my Fano, my family, her mother. There's a couple generations of family that live here. And they have accepted me into their their tribe, so to speak. And that's a beautiful thing. If you know things work out differently like down the line, I have the ability to move yeah. uh, and move my whole home with me. And... But it gives me community. It gives me safety, security that way. They have a huge dog that patrols for me. Um, and it's just a nice, nice, comfortable way of living and having my privacy, but having company at the same time. Yeah, yeah. And Gretchen, how about you? Well, I'm, I'm a pagan witch. I'm a Wiccan witch. So, um That provides me with a lot of community. There's always something going on. There's a lot of people around me. I'm fortunate in that respect. Okay. Lenora. <laughs> <laughs> what i was relying on you uh, it, it, it's been it's, it's been a long day it's it's funny because it's like only it's 1 30 i'm on the canadian prairies it's only 1 30 in the afternoon but it feels like it's 11 <laughs> well, i mean okay where are we in the question oh okay i guess final question before we wrap up um again thank you you know both for your candor now i have a technology question um how do you see it evolving and how do you think technology would answer the question uh won't you be lonely because i mean look we're we're all here in different we're, parts of the world talking yeah. right now you two are inspire you know inspiring people who are watching and and people are going to be re-watching this after the live stream is over so i mean the message will continue so what do you both feel about technology and the role in you know as as you get older keeping you connected uh, Gretchen, I love it. I love it. That's awesome. Oh, okay. um, yeah. I love the modern world. It's so mm. much better. It's so much better. The, and, you know, the news is always terrible about, you know, all, all, you know, all these disasters all the time and that we are receiving um, disasters from all over the world and have to you know, I, it's a good idea to unplug once in a while, take a news break. But um, yeah, have you know, being able to do stuff like this, um, having Facebook and Instagram and a website of your own, it's just, I love it. I love it. It's great. And it's done a lot to um, keep me connected with other people. Uh -huh. And I, I think it'll continue to be good. It'll mm -hmm. continue to be important. And um, y you have to, for yourself, don't you all agree? You have to moderate for yourself how much you're online. Because yeah. I yeah. can sit here yeah. and I know I can sit here in this chair looking at this screen 24 mm -hmm. hours a day uh -huh. and have something interesting going on all the time. I have to be on purpose about taking myself away from it so that I get to see the real world. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, Laura, Laura, I agree with them. Perfect. I, I, I love it. COVID changed the whole world for us as far as communication. It did for me. I can jump on a webinar or a Zoom or whatever. I'm not all that great at the technology part of it. <laughs> But it has widened things. But I think it's important to stay grounded also in human contact. And it has changed things and it will continue to change things, technology, I mean. But I still think there's something in the human touch and in being in company with humans and people that you have commonality with. And I think you can do that with technology, but also 
it's good to sometimes just reach out and hold somebody's hand. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe I'm a little old fashioned in that. I don't know, but um, yeah, I, I like the balance of the, those things. Yeah. And well, so, on that note, I'm going to host yeah. an after party at my house. If you guys can find me somehow. <laughs> We'll be the life of the party. <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> you know, uh, I better watch what I say. Next thing I know, my doorbell's ringing. Um. <laughs> so we're, we're out of time. But You're in, out of time, yes. In, in closing, uh, is there anything that you would like to plug or promote or let people know if they want to reach out to you, get in touch with you? How can they do that? Gretchen, please go. Um, SonomaTarot.com is my website. And I'm uh, Sonoma Taro on Instagram. And um, I'm not hard to reach. I'm checking that site all the time for people who filled out my thank you, who filled out my little contact form. And yeah, I do tarot readings. I'm psychic. It kind of goes along with being a witch. Are we going to survive the next hour? <laughs> Meaning me and Jody. <laughs> Yes. Okay, yes. Great. You won't Thank die you. in the next hour. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, no, I, I, was, I wasn't going that far. I just meant are we going to be able to continue? Good to know. <laughs> <laughs> but also good to know. Laura, how can people get a hold of you? Um, I am not on any of those things except Facebook, but uh, you can always reach me at Laurel J. Bach. That's L A U R E L J. B A C H as in the composer at gmail.com. And I'm open to, uh, I'm always into reading people's thoughts and, and ideas on email. I would like, if it's okay to plug my charity that I, I volunteer for, sure, yeah. which is dress for success, which is an international program. You may have heard of it. It started in New York mm -hmm. and uh, that's where I first was in touch with it. And now here I am with them in New Zealand. So it's Dress for Success is a great organization. And they're also on Facebook. Very good. Well, awesome. ladies, thank you for your time. And with that, we will close this panel and get ready for the next one. Thank you. Thank you both. Bye. Thank Bye. you.